Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, after this part, uh, I will show uh, some measurements of transferred lighting over voltages, which we managed to record on power transformers while in service. And uh, I will show the typical waveforms and frequency spectrum of such, of such over voltages. Uh, after that, we try to simulate uh, these events, which we recorded in the network, and also we compared the EMTP wideband, different EMTP wideband transformer models, uh, and validated uh, our models using the test results of the high voltage laboratory. And at the end, I will show several case studies uh, regarding uh, EMTP simulations of transfer over voltages in comparison with the on site measurements at power transformer points. Okay. So, as you know, Power transformers are exposed uh, during the lifetime uh, to various over voltages, switching lightning, very fast transient over voltages, and so on. So, uh, why it is important to measure such events in the network to see what happens, what are real over voltage wave shapes, and to try to assess the influence of such events on insulation system. Uh, of course, then in some cases, if we have good uh, transformer models, which are accurate enough, and then we can validate, validate uh, the results of such model and use them in the, simulate, in the simulations to to see what are the critical situations for for power transformer. Uh, so basically, one of the reasons why we calculate transfer lower voltages is to check the level, uh, the insulation stress of the power transformers, or to check the efficiency of installed over voltage protection and surge arresters. In some cases, uh, the results of such simulations can give you information about necessity of installing additional surge arresters and protecting better power transfer. According to the SIGRE uh, reliability survey that was done in A237 uh, working group, here you can see that the uh, major cause of uh, transformer failure uh, of transformer failure are of dielectric nature, and this was uh, done by analyzing the failures of uh, 964 power transformers. So in that case, we can see that uh, most of the failures were, were caused by interterm failures of dielectric nature, caused by partial discharge or flash over inside the insulation system. So we know that uh, we test our equipment to various types of power voltages, by using standard uh, standard uh, wave shapes in laboratory conditions, of course. For example, for fast front over voltages, we use 1.250. For very fast transit over voltages, there is no prescribed uh, test wave shape. However, some secret working groups are working on this part. Maybe in the future, there will be also some proposed test wave shapes for, for very fast transit over voltages. However, uh, this lighting impulse one. Uh, Waveform 1.250, uh, power transformers are tested one, uh, once when they are produced and they are in new condition in laboratory and after in service they are exposed to different types of wave shapes and frequencies. Okay, what is interesting to see regarding the lighting wave voltages is that some investigation on uh, insulation systems regarding oil, oil paper insulation, uh, they uh, discovered that uh, a repeated application of lighting impulses weakens the insulation performance of insulation system, which can eventually lead to breakdown of, of, of internal failure in power transformer. And what is interesting to see is that uh, experimental investigations in laboratory testing, of course, confirm that degradation of transformer and insulation system increases significantly as time difference between successive transient over voltages decrease. So this is more or less connected with real over voltages that we recorded in case of multiple
Okay, so let's not touch it. So uh, we use the, the data from the lighting location system, and as you can see on these figures, in Croatia we have many lighting activity, and we use the information from that system to correlate lighting activity with over voltages and failures in uh, power transmission network. So we have all substation and transmission line uh, on the on the map, so we can correlate by by correlating the exact event of the lightning strike with the event of relay protection and SCADA system. Then we can check if some failed faults in the network are caused by light. Uh, okay. Regarding the measurements of, the, of over voltage, we used uh, measure over voltage transient over voltage monitor, monitoring system, which was connected to the bushing tab. So this is uh, High voltage bushing insulator or power power transformer. It can be also be in the case of shunt reactor, for example. So we connect measuring system on the bushing tap of such uh, transformer bushing. And as you know, inside oil paper insulation system, there are several conductive uh, sheets of oils which are used to linearize potential and electrical field inside insulation system. So basically, we form capacity divider. Uh, so we can equivalent insulation system with several capacitors connected in series, and at the last coil we connect low voltage capacitor, and in that way we form capacitive divider, which can be calibrated. And uh, on the secondary side we measure, for example, voltage or trigger to system to measure over voltage and so on. So on the left figure you can see the transformer bushing, the measuring tap, and the connected measuring system with internal matching impedance. So this principle of measurement. We test the system, it is linear, up to five frequencies. And on the right figures, you can see laboratory test. So uh, on the figure four, switching impulse, lightning impulse, and on the figure six, lightning impulse, impulse chopped wave. So we compare the uh, response of this measuring system with the uh, calibrated measuring system inside high voltage laboratory. And as you can see, it performs well. And that confirm uh, that we can use it on, on on site basically. So we what we do we use information from lighting location system, from transient over voltage measuring system which measures waveforms at transformer terminals, GIS. So uh, information about precise location of transmission line and substations and data from SCADA system which reports events, failures, automatic closures, circuit breaker operation, and everything is. GP, uh, GPS synchronized, so the timing should be uh, very accurate to perform such correlation. Okay, on the next few slides, I will show several transfer lighting over voltages which were recorded on power transformers and some uh, frequency spectrum of such such events. So this is the case that we investigated. We have uh, 110 to 220 kV substation with three power transformer. Uh, three power transformers. We have a double uh, circuit 220 kV transmission line which connects the substation one, one with substation two and three. Uh, transient over voltage monitoring system is installed at this power transformer here in substation one and also here. So we investigated lightning strikes to this tra uh, transmission line connecting to substation. And of course, each event should be recorded by both. Uh, transient over voltage measuring systems because we have traveling waves and the lightning over voltage is, will appear from both sides of the transmission line. So this is the first case. For example, uh, we recorded here there was a fault. The uh, lightning location system detected the uh, current amplitude of 115 kiloamps, and distance was very close to the to the substation tree. And at the same time, SCADA system detected double phase to ground fault, which means flash over uh, in, on insulator string in two phases. And this was followed by auto reclosure operation of circuit breakers from the both sides. So, what was recorded here in substation one, this transformer and here simultaneously, these are the wave shapes. So, we can see that we have normal sinusoidal voltage at the beginning, and then we have failure of lightning over voltage flash over. And then after that short circuit, and we can see the voltage drop in faulty phases. 
so this is from both sides of the transmission line. What is interesting is to filter out 50 Hertz components this event to see only transient lower voltages and check what are the frequencies. And you can see, for example, that in both cases, frequency, uh, dominant frequency, the waveforms are from 1 to, let's say, 10 roughly kilohertz. The same goes from, from the other side of the transmission. What we can see the transient lower voltages put by lightning are not uh, unipolar as the 1.250 wave shape. So we have bipolar oscillating waveform and it comes to the transformer terminals. Uh, measuring system recorded simultaneously wave shapes from high voltage side and low voltage side of the power transformer in both substations. Another event uh, which we can see here is also caused by lightning. So but it's more far away from this substation on the transmission line. And this event uh, caused three phase to ground fault, so flash over in all phases of the transmission line. And this was also followed by outer closure. What we recorded in lightning location system is a multiple lightning strike with seven successive return strokes. And here you can see the amplitudes and time difference between each uh, return stroke. So, by doing time correlation, we uh, figure out that this event minus 80 kilo caused three phase flash over on the transmission line. We confirmed that, of course, with the MTP situations later on. And this event was recorded by transient over voltage monitoring system in both substations. So we can see flash over and voltage drop in all three phases here and here. Of course, voltage drop is higher in substation one because place of the port is closer to that location. And frequency spectrum uh, of, on, on uh, power transformer terminals is again between 1 and 10 kilohertz. What is interesting, a few milliseconds after that event, while short circuit was still in the network, uh, these two return strokes hit again transmission line, and we recorded while we have voltage drop short circuit two more over voltages are reported and then after and after that we can see opening of circuit break and, and basically rest restoration of voltage so difference between two successive impulses that we record is 30 milliseconds which corresponds to the information from lighting location system so minus 19 minus 10, uh, almost minus 30 kilos uh, caused additional uh, over voltage and power transformer terminals. So we can see that in reality, power transformer can, can be exposed to several uh, very steep uh, over voltages of, of which are oscillatory and they follow uh, each other in a very short time period, which can be very dangerous for the insulation system as confirmed by laboratory testing, uh, which we could found in the literature. Why it is important to, to analyze such events? So, okay, for this particular case, we can see that, for example, in phase A, the high voltage side, and this is 220 kV side, uh, we have over voltage to that phase. This is only high frequency component, so we filter out AC component. Here we can see the operation of surge arrestor, which limits the, the over voltage. And if we calculate what is the spectral density of such recorded wave shape, we get this red curve. And if we overlap that with 1.250 uh, wave shape uh, of this amplitude, which corresponds to impulse uh, for this transformer for testing in the laboratory, we can see that spectral density of the recorded wave shape exceeds the envelope uh, of the test wave shape in the laboratory, which means that at such frequencies, uh, this lightning, uh, real lightning over voltages, uh, uh, real lightning over voltage injected much more energy into the insulation system than that we do in tests. This doesn't mean that there will be a failure in such power transformer, but it means that testing capability at this frequency are exceeded. So it can it can be in some cases dangerous for power transformer. So it is called this approach. Uh, uses frequency domain severity factor. Of course, there are much more accurate uh, more, uh, methods like time domain severity factor and so on. But in any way, we can assess somehow the insulation of real recorded lightning over voltage on the insulation system of power transformer. 
Okay, so now I will show uh, the slides about uh, why bent transformer models that we developed in EMTP and something about validation using test results obtained in, in the high voltage laboratory. Okay, uh, we know that the, the wave shape of actual transfer lower voltage depends on the transformer inner geometry, which means mainly on the construction of the windings. And uh, we know that uh, models are often too complex, and there are several practical problems. In some cases, we don't have enough data to, to for measurements to be very accurate to develop very reliable models, or uh, uh, that is the, the reason why, actually, for example, you, you cannot obtain a very easily internal geometry or the details to make white box or gray box models, or if you want to develop black, black box model, as in this case, that we used, it takes some time to do all the measurements and fitting and so on. Uh, so there are several secret working groups which deal with, with, with such uh, topics, and probably in the, in the future we will have standardized procedures for measuring, testing, and development of appropriate MTP models. So we used uh, in this in this research black box high frequency transformer model, which is based on uh, sweep frequency response analysis measurements. And we also use some simplified approach, which is more or less low frequency model, but extended with some capacitances that we could measure to increase the frequency range of, of, of the anticipated as a, such model. So uh, uh, black box high frequency transformer model, we can apply in several situations, for example, to calculate the level of transfer lower voltages or to analyze interactions between the transformer and network. Uh, another e uh, example is uh, insulation coordination of power system to check if uh, there should be installed some additional surge arrests. How we uh, made such models, I think you, you can see here four steps. So first we perform measurements of transformer parameters versus frequency. Different approach can be used, so we can measure scattering parameters impedance, sudden and transfer functions. We use uh, uh, SFRA measurements to obtain frequency dependent sudden and smoothness. So after that, with measurements, we calculate the matrix elements and we do fitting uh, by using rational approximation of or vector fitting and then include that results into state space equation block, which is already included in standard MTP library. So for example, uh, what we measure by using FRA measurements is basically transfer function. So we measure voltage output and input voltage, with, uh, which are mixed independent. And then from that, we can calculate what is the transfer function. This is example of three winding power transformer. So if we have three winding three phase power transformer and one neutral point, we may have a uh, matrix which is 10 by 10, or if we also incorporate 10 of the transformer, it will be 11 times 11. Uh, dimension of the matrix. How to perform measurements, I will just go through this very quickly. Uh, we use SFRA instrument, which is commonly uh, part of the high voltage equipment. So this is connection for measuring diagonal uh, elements of the, of, the, of, the, of the admittance matrix. And uh, basically it injects some current, it has a voltage source with variable frequency, and we measure voltage drop on the resistors to at each frequency and then calculate what is the transfer function. Also, the scheme for measuring of off diagonal elements matrix. And by using this expression, we can calculate what is the uh, frequency dependence of each element of the transformer matrix. Here you can see typical results. Depending on the geometry and complexity of the transformer, uh, each uh, element of the admittance matrix has certain frequency response. and at high frequency rate, we have multiple resonance points, which are now taken into account into the model. So on the left figure, we can see it's very simplified flowchart to how to extract transformer analysis matrix from SFRA measurements to do rational approximations and fitting with uh, rational uh, functions. So they should be uh, stable and passive functions and then incorporation into MTP using state space representation uh, and then we can do simulation tandem. On the right figure, we can see measurements and the results of the vector fitting and also error for one other than symmetric element. So this is magnitude and this is phase input. For our transformer that we analyzed, which is in the network 220 to 100 
and then the one that, that I present that we recorded the variations, here are results of the measurements of uh, additives matrix uh, elements versus frequency. And after that, after fitting procedure and everything, we incorporated that into state space. So it has total 10 terminals, three from high voltage side, three from low voltage side, three connections from for the tertiary winding, and one neutral point. So it is auto transformer with one uh, tertiary one. After that, we perform measurement of, of transfer lower voltage to high voltage length by using, for example, this is one of the several configurations we investigated. So we inject lighting impulse in this phase, and other phases are terminated with certain impedance. For example, tertiary one 50 ohms, which corresponds to the, for example, cable or something similar, and all other terminals by some impedance, which corresponds, for example, to such impedance of transmission line. Uh, and here we can see the injected lighting impulse, and from high voltage side and transferred lower voltage on the secondary side. So we can see that the results of simulation of EMTP simulations and measurements match very well, which means that it works fine. And after that, we also tried some simplified approach by using the PC frame model, so it's basically a RL matrix with incorporating some additional capacitance between the windings and, and the windings to ground. And now I will switch to, to the last part uh, with real case studies. And uh, okay, so we observed transients or transient over voltages which were caused by lightning strike to 220 kV overhead line. And uh, the same event that we recorded was simulated in EMTP. Uh, we have developed detailed model of the substation to take into account all elements which could influence the response on the, of the power transformer. And the uh, other approach was to inject measured lower voltage, for example, from high voltage side, and then to calculate what is transferred to, to low voltage side. It is also possible to do validation of the model by going to that approach. And we used the black box model. Not all data were known to us. For example, that position of the transformer at the time instant of the lightning strike, we were not known, so we uh, simulated several cases. Here you can see single line diagram. So this is 110 kV part of the substation, several transmission line connected. Our power transformer three measured uh, transient over voltages, 220 kV part of the substation. This is the common double circuit, 220 kV transmission line. Trans power transformer. Is protected by surge arrestors from both sides, and in each line bay we have uh, also installed that there are surge arrestors protecting both sides. So at the first step, we develop very simplified model to check if uh, if transformer models are performing well. So we inject the measure lighting over voltage from high voltage side, and we calculate the transfer over voltage on the secondary side. So from the secondary side, we included some. Capacitance is representing uh, high voltage equipment and additional transmission lines which were connected at the, at the time instant of the lightning strike. And as you can see, this case represents lightning strike that didn't cause failure of the of insulator string. So no short circuit in the network, only impulse which was uh, measured. So left figure shows measured measurements. So we can see that some lower voltage came. It was correlated. With lighting location system, so it is definitely lighting event. And after simulation, we get this result. So result is is good in terms of uh, amplitude, which is the most important parameter when we check insulation coordination and surge arrestors. But as you can see, in simulation result, results, we uh, don't have so much damping as, as measurements. But that is the reason. The reason is probably why uh, from the secondary side we didn't go into the very detailed modeling of substation. We only equivalent it very simple. So in the next step, we will see the, the complete model. Uh, another approach was to inject uh, from the primary side recorded over voltage and to calculate what is transferred on the secondary side. And so here we can see the results of the simulations measurements. Again, in this case, also we have quite good match in terms of amplitude, not so much in terms of frequency, but in amplitude it is it is uh, quite well. And after that, to improve these uh, errors, we developed more sophisticated, more detailed model of the complete substation. So here you can see the 
200% je Kevin Smishlnaj, uh, our three power explorers, which are all basically black box models because they are the same. This is our power transformer that we are investigating, and from the secondary side, complete model of the, of the substation. So I will not speak about each element, every, every, every uh, element is model very, very detailed. And now we tested several simulations, for example, 1.250. If we apply that impulse from high voltage side, we get this on the secondary side. So these are transferred over voltages. So these three curves are the response of the black box high frequency transformer model. And this is the response of the PC trend model extended by capacitances. As we can see, in this case, for this steep uh, impulse, it is not performing well. So it is the best way is to use basically black box wide band transformer model. But if we decrease the time front, which means we decrease the frequency, then BC trend the response of the BC trend model in terms of amplitude is almost the same as the as the response of the complete black box model of power transformer. So we introduce some additional test waves to lower down the frequencies and very long waves, and in that case it as well. The reason why we can do that to a certain frequency range by using this trend is the response. So we can see it behaves well in, in, in low frequency range and in high frequency range it might make uh, there can be very big difference between the models but in any case we should be careful and we can use it if the transformer geometry is not too complex if we don't have many resonance frequencies. There was a paper that I missed about that. Okay, and now uh, case of reported lightning over voltage on the high voltage side of power transformer. So we measure this and we try to calculate what are the transfer over voltages on the secondary side. So this, uh, here you can see the results. Over voltage is recorded on the primary side, transfer over voltages uh, calculated by using the black box model and the same calculated by using the extended PC trend model, we can see that results are similar, but in terms of amplitude, PC trend model gives higher amplitudes and it has less damping, so it oscillates much more. Okay, so if we overlap the results in each case, you can see that. So to estimate in such cases, transfer lower voltage amplitudes is not so easy by using the simplified model. Uh, after that, we tried another approach, so we injected measured waveforms, which are these three, on the primary side, and we calculated what is transferred on the lower voltage side by using high frequency black box model and standard PC trend model. The, we investigated the influence of topology of substation because the level of transfer lower voltages uh, is affected by the topology from, from the low voltage side. So this was full topology, all transmission line connected. And we can see quite big difference, okay, as we expected. And if we consider no low condition, because at the time when the lightning strike hit the transmission line, uh, the, the condition was similar to this one. And in this case, we can see that measurement of transferred lightning over voltage uh, matches very well with black box model and also with extended PC trend model, but as you can see, this extended PC trend model gives uh, higher amplitudes uh, compared to the, to the black box model. But we are satisfied with the results. Okay, and this is another case. Pri uh, primary uh, measured uh, over voltage and calculated over voltage from the secondary side, very good matching between the between the both models, PC trend and high frequency black box model. Okay, uh, so the second case, this was flash over in two phases that I showed previously. So we have lightning strike that caused double phase to ground hold. Here you can see the recorded wave shapes. Okay. And after that, we try to simulate that in EQP. So we get for the lightning current from the location system, lightning location system, we obtain flash over in exact the, the same phases. What is good here? When we simulate lightning strike, we should know the, the angle of the of, of the AC voltage, which can be, uh, which we can uh, estimate from the measurements of transient over voltage monitoring system. So if we match all that and use full 
PMTP model of substation and the uh, high frequency black box model of power transformer, we obtained the exact flash over in, in two phases that were, that were uh, present in the measurements. And after this event, this transient over voltage propagates inside substation and we calculated the over voltages on primary side and on secondary side of this transformer by using again black box and extended PCP model. So we can see that amplitudes of such events very well uh, agree with, with field measurements. I will skip this case because this was presented on, on, on the IPST conference. I just want to point out that this transformer here, which is step up transformer, uh, it, it has a uh, very simple geometry compared to the previous one. So it has only two winding. And uh, here we investigated also propagation of lightning oil voltages over the transformer. And since, since the geometry is quite simple, extended VC trend model even gives a good result in this frequency range up to 30, let's say, kilohertz. So we were able to calculate lightning transfer over voltages even by using the simplified model, which we checked of course, later on with SFR measurements. And here you can see typical waveforms of lightning over voltages from high voltage, low voltage side, and the resonant frequencies from the secondary side. So it is important to check that because it should be compared to the, to the frequency response of the winding of the transformer to see the possibility of resonance occurrence. And the last case that we uh, investigated was lightning strike to 400 kV over the line. And we have this power transformer, 400 to 110 to 30 kV, protected by surge arresters and also surge arrested line bay. Uh, for this power transformer, which, which is much more complex, we use black box model of power transformer. Again, we perform lesser carry measurements. We uh, perform fitting, and here you can see the results. So these are the results of measurement and fit fitting of the admittance matrix elements magnitude. And phase end. So you can see that fitting performs very well because errors are quite low. And after that, testing in laboratory, uh, two configuration of testing, lighting impulse in this phase, and transferred over voltages from the secondary and tertiary side. You can see that measurements and situations match very well in the simulations and measurements. And also for the other configuration, you can see transferred over voltages which are matching quite well. After validation of the model, we did some simulation to check lighting over voltages on primary, secondary, secondary and tertiary side, and we compared that with the isolation levels of transformer to check if everything will be uh, okay when the transformer is in operation. To check resonant frequency is important because we can measure frequency response of the winding, and in this case there is no danger to, uh, for the secondary side winding to be resonance caused by light. Okay, and by using such detailed model of, of uh, power transformer, we can calculate uh, lighting oil voltages on all basic substation elements to check the operation of surge arrestors to control lower voltage protection. Okay, and to conclude, uh, so the transfer or resonant over voltages and transformer interaction network can be easily analyzed by using black box model uh, in EMTP, which, which is developed and based on measurements. It is advisable to use such model due, due to its high frequency, uh, high accuracy, sorry, in, in wide frequency spectrum. Simplified approach uh, using this trend model extended by measured capac capacitances, it is okay in case when frequency response measurements are not available or transformer internal geometry is unknown. But in this case, we should be aware that the transformer model is limited in terms of frequency range, usually up to several tens of kilohertz, if the transformer geometry is not too complex, and uh, if the frequency spectrum of considered transient oil voltages is not too high, which depends, of course, on numerous factors uh, in reality, this model can be used for simulating transfer uh, lightning oil voltages also. Thank you.